Welcome uh, back, my uh, chess friends, to uh, Chess Cruncher with Bags. And uh, this is a really, really fun game that I played uh, against my opponent. His name is Ghost. Uh, actually, Ghost Fighter. <laughs> it's kind of funny they named himself that, but he did. Okay, I'm white and he's black. This is, I call this uh, game, the pawn check, the two pawn checkmate. Either one wins. That, just keep that in mind when you look at the checkmate position. Okay, let us continue. Let us continue. I go uh, e4. He goes e5. I go knight f3. He goes knight f6. I take the pawn at e5. This is the Russian defense. He goes d6. I go f3. He goes the queen to e7. D3, protecting, and I'm trying to keep my advantage of the extra pawn. He goes D5, uh, trying to keep his advantage of the extra pawn. I go E5, now he allows me to expand on the king side. He goes G4, I go um, knight, uh, no, sorry, D4, uh, protecting the pawn and also preparing to go bishop E2 and take the knight. And even if he takes the knight, um, I mean, even if the bishop takes the knight, I could take back with the queen, still having the threat of the attack on the knight, and it's just a big problem for him. He goes knight e4, uh, I go bishop e2, getting ready to castle, he goes bishop e7, 6, I castle, he goes h6, I go bishop, I mean knight b d2. I want to trade off his knight so that I can get a good uh, advantage. And he does. He obliges and trades off. And now I have the I have two bishops. I'm better developed. I'm castled. And now all I gotta do is start smashing open the king side or the queen side. And I'm also, if you notice, a pawn up. So I have an advantage. You can always remember if you're a pawn up in a game. Be careful, try to hold it, and a pawn can win the game. Remember that. Okay, he goes c5, uh, c3. This is kind of looking similar to the to the French defense, so it's cool. He goes knight c3. I go bishop b5, pinning the knight, getting ready. If he uh, allots me, I can go... Um, Bishop takes knight, you know, wreck his queen side, also take advantage of a lot of stuff. So he goes uh, queen c7. Uh, he doesn't want his queen side pawns to be wrecked. I go queen to a4. I'm not worried if he plays a6, because if he plays a6, he can't take. Because if he takes, if you notice, his king's not castled, and I'll win a rook for a bishop. So that's that and I know you I know you saw I know you saw that so that that's good he goes bishop e2 I go e1 rerouting my knight I want to go d3 f4 attacking his bishop get, getting rid of his bishops and uh, then I have a superior advantage of f4 f5 his king size getting ripped open so that's also an idea he goes castle Queen takes, pawn takes, queen c2, he takes, takes, and then I, he goes a5, I go knight d3, going along with my idea, he goes uh, bishop f5, I go rook a d1, uh, I'm still up a pawn, I'm able to relieve the pressure off of my queen pretty soon, so that's the whole idea. He thought he had a huge pressure on my queen. No, I have time enough to move and get a huge attack. I'll show you how it goes. He goes. He gets greedy and goes after my knight. Actually, sorry, after my yeah, after my knight. And then I take. He goes c5. He goes uh, bishop to. Uh, I go bishop e3, protecting the pawn. If he takes, takes. And I might even be able to win another pawn. Who knows that you know all goes along with how what he plays and so uh he goes e4 trying to uh attack my queen but he also in the same uh thing he gave me the ability of having the pawn majority on the king side i have four against three and he only has two against two on the queen side so 
I'm uh, in a superior advantage. Now all I gotta do is get my position to winning, and you know I always do. So let me. I'll show you how it goes. I go d2, queen d2. I'm threatening to uh, take the pawn at h5, h6, and I'm also threatening f4, uh, rook f3, g3, and just a humongous wreck on his structure. He goes bishop to b4. I go C C1, keeping still the um, pin with the on the pawn at H5, uh, sorry H6. He goes C C3. I go Bishop takes, Queen takes, Queen takes, Bishop takes, and then uh, C take C the the rook to C3. I uh, also see that he has a weak bishop. And he does um, something really, um, he should have retreated his bishop to b4, but he does a rook move, which isn't very good. Rook uh, to c8, rook fc8. The reason that's not a um, good move is it allows me to do that. And he, what he should have played was um, to hold his bishop together and hold his position together. He should have played rook c uh the c8 rook to uh, c7, but he does it. He pl he plays he plays uh, a4. He allows me to double up. Now I'm going to win his bishop. Whatever he does, he's going to lose a bishop. So he goes c c4. I take. He plays b4, trying to go after my weak uh, a2 pawn. I check because I'm trading down. Check. He goes uh, king h7. I go king f1 because I want to make sure I don't get a back rank mate. That would be horrible, having a superior advantage and then him mating me on the back rank. So that's not good. I He played uh, b rook b2. The reason he's doing that is trying to undermine my structure. I go a3. I know I'm putting it on the same color as my bishop, but I need it to be there so that I can protect it. He goes rook b3. I go rook c1, he goes rook b1, I go king e2, he goes rook a1, I uh, protect the rook with, uh, uh, I mean protect the pawn at a3. Uh, I look back at this in my analysis, I think um, rook to c2 would have been a, a better move just so I could get my king involved into the fight and his rooks blocked and it's it would just be bad so but you know I <laughs> human mistakes so that's we're not computers so so that allowed him to check I went um, bishop d2 I went uh, knight c5 you're wondering why I give up the pawn no but if you notice I'm gonna win the d5 pawn he takes I take now I have a passer, and he's got a passer, but I can control that passer because it's on the A. You see where it's got a queen? On the same color as my bishop. Even if I had to sacrifice my bishop, I would still be able to have a, a pass pawn in the center. Very strong. He goes A, A1. I go rook A5. Uh, I am now um, behind the pass pawn, his pass pawn, and he can't move his rook, otherwise he'll lose it. He goes a3, I go bishop c3, he goes a2, I go king to uh, f3, he, uh, that was a, um, <clears throat> well, wow, whoa, um, g, king g6, uh, when I looked at that I was like, wow, that's, was it a very good move? It was a wasting a time waster. But I think what he's thinking is he has to uh, get his king involved to stop the pass pawn. But that that doesn't work. I check. He moves there. Now he's in a big problem. I check him with g4, and uh, I'm going to. Uh, step back. I'm going to move one move for black and I'm going to step back and allow you to see the mate in two. Okay? So just one second. Now it's your turn my friends. Mate and two. Have a good time at this. There's two ways to mate by the way. So 
uh, enjoy. Okay, so I'm going to step back right now and allow you to um, see it. And if you need more time, stop the um, the tape and uh, our <laughs> the session that we're in right now, and take your time, pause it, and then come back, and uh, then you can see the mating combination. Okay, I'll step back now. Exactly. I know you saw King G3. He went G6. Checkmate. There's a mate at F4. There's a mate at H4. So either one of those mates works. So, uh, and I know you saw both of them. Remember, if you need a little extra time, stop before uh, the mating combination happens, the move sequence, and learn from it. Okay. I will, uh, um, as always, God bless, and I'll see you next time on Chess Cruncher.